Thank you very much, Giovanni. Um, and I am really happy to be here. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. It was very enlightening to um, listen to this brief poll that you did with Giovanni initially to get um, a first insight into your um, expectations, your experience and your vision. And I hope that um, we will respond to um, many of those expectations throughout um, the workshops. Um, I don't know how many of you read the, the thematic uh, paper. Um, there's still lots of time to do so. Um, what I will attempt to do in this next half an hour is just to walk you through mainly the main sections and the main points to, to give you a, a little bit of a summary of, of what to expect and hopefully also awaken some questions um, at the very end. Um, good for thought for further discussion with your peers as well as maybe um, uh, for um, your peers at home. My experience is in social enterprise development and, uh, and uh, everything that connects to it, which kind of grew into a really big field, um, including um, market development, finance, um, policy advisory roles. And so it was a, a very interesting and, uh, and uh, astonishing experience really for me to, 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 um, to take a uh, uh, stock of uh, what uh, member states have done over the past 20 years since I've been in this field in developing their policies and their social economies. It um, was a, a real learning experience and I could see how in many aspects, um, the speed of change is incredible. And in some other aspects, as we will see, it's a little bit slower than desired. Of course, from the point of view of social economy, uh, change can never be quick enough, but I think um, uh, there, there's a lot of will and openness now and, and hopefully quite a lot of resources uh, available to uh, accelerate some of the changes in the right direction. Could I have the next slide, please? And the next. So before we, we jump into uh, discussing how you might be able to build strategies or develop or improve your existing strategies for social economy, maybe we'll just quickly um, put up a reminder about what we mean and what the European Commission means by social economy. Um, it is, according to many, a sector, but it's certainly an ecosystem of a really wide range and diverse range of organizations that nevertheless share similar features. And these are the main ones. They certainly aim to generate a positive impact on people, communities, and the environment. And the emphasis here is on, on generating a positive impact rather than you know, avoiding harmful practices. They're uh, organizations in an economy, so they certainly generate revenue, Many of them have profits, which they turn back into their social or environmental purposes. This is very important. They use in their governance democratic and or participatory practices, which means involving their stakeholders, their beneficiaries, and, and um, taking um, into account many different views. And this is um, a collection of a very diverse um, range of private entities, which depending on what country you're in, might take different forms, legal forms and organizational forms. And some are listed here, associations, cooperatives, mutuals, foundations, and social enterprises. On the next slide, we shall see why we are actually discussing the social economy and why it matters. I think you've heard a lot about this from Ruth, Ruth Passerman. Um, and you might have read a lot of uh, studies or statistics already showing that there's definitely an increasing weight and emphasis um, of the social economy in the economies and the employment sector specifically. So um, according to the OECD, there's about 2.8 million social economy entities in the European Union, which um, in 2020 made up about 6.3% of the total workforce. So it's quite significant. They are very much um, an ally to our governments and delivering uh, on many of the policy goals, um, be it um, sustainable economic development, social or environmental policies. 
So for instance, in social inclusion or in environmental policies, green transition or reduction of poverty. They are incredibly diverse, active in just about every sector of the economy that you can think of. And I could start from, you know, listing and we could still be here tomorrow, agriculture, tourism, various industries, services, care, health, education, you name it. And so they're really there everywhere, meaning that, um, that there's a lot of potential to explore there. The source of innovation, and when we talk about innovation, we don't just mean technological, but very much thinking about social innovation. So um, by bringing in new types of business models and new uh, um, approaches to how to deliver services and products to um, disadvantaged beneficiaries, they really create new ways of doing things, which uh, in a lot of cases inspire other economic actors. This goes back to what somebody said in the vision poll about mainstreaming and uh, setting new standards. On the next slide, um, there is a little bit of an EU policy context, which I'm just going to run through because we had heard this before. Um, thinking about the social economy and these new types of um, models is, is not a new phenomenon. The first major policy initiative dates back to 2011 to the social business initiative. Um, and uh, over the past 12, 13 years, there has been a lot of uh, uh, initiatives and policy packages and some of the major ones are mentioned here. And um, we heard um, quite a lot of detail about the social economy action plan, which contains the commitments of the commission to how to improve um, the social economy across the union. Whereas the council recommendation uh, spells out more what um, you should be doing in the member states. Um, so in other words, what can be some of those types of measures that you could consider and implement in order to create an enabling framework for social economy to grow and further develop. And so we, um, when discussing how to create strategy, we'll be focusing on the framework that the council recommendation set, which there is a summary table of on the next slide. So as uh, Ruth mentioned, the council recommendation is a legal act and the main goal of it is to encourage you in the member states to draw up strategies for developing the social economy because the social economy merits a dedicated and comprehensive strategy. We've just talked about why it matters, um, how it's a growing sector and ever-present sector of the economy and is a really good um, lever to, um, to um, bring up uh, communities and, and people that um, might feel like they're left behind. In the recommendation, there are two main organizing principles um, of the measures that are listed. The first chunk, you could say, is more thematically organized. So it talks about how what could be possible measures to, to, be, to provide better access to the labour market, to improve social inclusion, um, um, to offer more skills, relevant and up-to-date, and, and, and how social economy can be um, um, leveraged more for social innovation, uh, territorial cohesion and sustainable economic development, which are main um, goals for um, the development of the European Union and the member states. The second half of the recommendation document itself focuses on what member states can do to develop enabling frameworks. What are some of the areas that research had shown uh, were challenges to social economy, such as access to funding, public and or private, or access to market and public procurement, or some difficulties or challenges with regards to using state aid or the taxation, the fiscal frameworks. Many of you mentioned social impact measurement and management, so there will be some uh, concrete tips there as well. And visibility and, and recognition, which um, tends to be quite a, a, a general and, and uh, important issue in, in a lot of the countries. So the council recommendation really wants to push member states to do more to um, create and develop their strategies and also to align them better with other economic policy 
uh, goals and, and measures. Uh, we will come back to talk about this a little bit later. So um, on the next slide, you will see um, what, um, based on, on the council recommendation, we kind of consider to be the main building blocks of such a strategy. And many of you with existing strategies will recognize these building blocks and others perhaps um, might take this as a, as, a, as a good pattern of framework to work with. Vision and objectives, which is the foundation for, for everything else is the first building block. Administrative and institutional setup is the second one. Consultation mechanisms and engagement of stakeholders is the third one. Visibility and recognition being the fourth and monitoring and evaluation building the fifth. So very quickly, I'll try and run through the key points regarding all of these building blocks, uh, starting with the vision and objectives on the next slide. And, and I realized when I was reviewing this, that one word is missing from here in the, under the first bullet point. Um, so the vision is, is there really to, to lay the foundations for the entire strategy, a vision for the social economy. Where do you see it going? What role would you like to see it within the economy and society? How significant, what size, and what would be, and here's the missing word, its contribution to your other policy goals. Vision is usually long term, so it would be something that you see happening in, I don't know, 20, 30 years. Um, and how to translate that into a roadmap or how to operationalize that is basically through um, objectives. In the thematic paper, you will see a number of, of member state examples that give good illustrations of how such a vision could be formulated and how it might be broken down into maybe bigger strategic areas and underneath that uh, uh, objectives that you can use to make the big vision, the bigger picture more concrete. So for instance, I just quoted one from the strategy of Poland. Um, one vision could be for social and solidarity economy to become an important instrument for active social policy supporting social and local development. So the emphasis in the Polish strategy is um, on uh, inclusion, local development, so very much a regional reach, and social policy. In other member states, for example, you will see in the paper the Slovenian example, there's actually a specific um, uh, quantitative uh, element in the vision as well, because they say they would like to see um, the social economy to represent 4.3% of the GDP. So again, depending on, on where you're at and where you think you want to go and, and where you see social economy playing a part, you can really um, create a vision um, that then can be shared with the um, other stakeholders. In some countries at the moment, social economy strategies don't exist yet as such, but it doesn't mean that they, they the social economy is not included in other development plans. So a couple of examples in the paper you will see would be Portugal or Romania, where, for example, um, social economy is mentioned as an important uh, element and sector to develop in the general development plan or in Romania, for instance, specifically in uh, uh, the labor market and employment strategy. The next slide, um, we'll jump to the second building block, which is the, the administrative and institutional setup. You have a vision, you've got some major objectives and perhaps more specific ones as well. Well, how do you, who is going to um, implement? How is that going to be coordinated and, and, um, and monitored? Um, the administrative and institutional setup will very much depend on the general public sector structure in your country. But we have seen um, some um, trends and some similarities when, re when reviewing the different member states practices. The first important thing is that the administrative and institutional setup should try to serve the vision and the objectives. So for instance, if your vision is honing in on social economy playing a part in the labor market or in social care, then it might make sense to, to house uh, the strategy and its responsible unit, perhaps in uh, the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, which happens in a lot of uh, countries. Um, the administrative setup should also help 
to coordinate with other uh, departments in the government and support provide support to others that might not have philosophy experience or might have never heard about social economy as such. In some countries, you've got um, a separate unit specifically set up to coordinate um, social economy. An example is the State Council for the De Development of Social Economy in Spain. Um, whereas in other countries, this mandate is given to an existing department, which is fine as long as um, there's resources and there's a mandate and hopefully there's some visibility and clout carried by this unit. So in other words, that other departments and other ministries know of its existence and, and hopefully recognize its importance. In some countries, this special uh, social economy unit actually includes or invites on a consultative basis social economy actors as well, which is uh, definitely a recommended best practice. Um, strong political endorsement helps. I think you probably don't need a lot of detail on this. It's the case with, with any policy, with any initiative. If it is supported at a high level, some example is given in the paper in France, for instance, where there's a state secretary or in Spain, same thing, Minister of Social Economy in Valonia. Then there's some figurehead, a champion within the government who can represent this and talk about it. And it's definitely very helpful. And um, in addition, a uh, last point here, possibly in addition to having a unit um, and some people who actually um, help coordinate and implement the strategy, it's important to have the mechanisms surrounding it, mechanisms to to help information flow, mechanisms to help uh, get feedback and requests, and mechanisms for coordination and monitoring. So, for instance, a good good example of this is that in Spain, um, there's a technical committee that's um, attached to the State Council for the Development of Social Economy, which had to elaborate a coordination plan, including these mechanisms and, uh, and, and various flows. On the next slide, a few details about um, how, to, how to use the consultation mechanisms and, and how stakeholder engagement might come into play. The first and most important thing, which I think um, is reflected in many of the strategies in the, the, the preamble, the first part, is um, that the strategy should respond to needs. And um, the best way to, to ensure that is to actually engage uh, stakeholders and beneficiaries in uh, the design phase, in, in the exploration phase at the beginning. Um, this is important because it helps you gather information, helps you um, become aware of the main challenges and issues, but also it obtains the buy-in of the stakeholders. It, it makes them realize that you do actually count on their opinion, that they matter, and therefore they'll be a lot more inclined to, to give you information and, and quite possibly to become engaged in the actual delivery of the strategy. So some examples in the paper would include um, how um, the Spanish or, or the Greek government conducted surveys um, and based on the surveys of, um, of social economy umbrella bodies, regional uh, governments, um, in the case of Spain, which enjoy a lot of autonomy, um, and government uh, officials, um, based on the, the survey findings, they've actually jointly put together a SWOT analysis. And this is really useful because it identified the, not only the key weaknesses and threats, but the opportunities. What are some maybe um, important and perhaps um, easy ways to, to, uh, to help um, social economy take off? In Ireland, there was a public consultation which was open to the general public. Um, stakeholders can be engaged and consultations can take place also during um, the implementation. And this is important to get additional capacity, to get additional expertise that the government might not have, but also to, to get the feedback. Uh, uh, it could serve as a, as a, as a feedback loop during the implementation. And a couple of examples um, I listed here as well. Um, who are these stakeholders that we are recommending you consider? Well, 
they're not only outside of government. Um, it's very important to think about who within the public sector needs to be considered as a stakeholder. Is it other ministries? Is it um, uh, public institutions? I don't know, like public early owned development banks, uh, enterprise development agencies, uh, various uh, grant development um, and grant giving schemes, or even the managing authorities of EU grants. And then there are the external stakeholders who, uh, from the central government's point of view, could be the regions, um, but also include everybody else that could bring resources and and expertise to the to the delivery of the strategy. So funders, academics, the social economy organisations and their representative bodies themselves. Even media, uh, when thinking about visibility and recognition, that could be really important. So using, for example, a stakeholder mapping exercise could be very useful to identify who the key actors are, how important they are, and how much influence they would have on the design and the delivery of the strategy. On the next slide, we'll see the fourth um, element, which I think many of you think of first when uh, considering a strategy and what are some of the challenges and some of the oh gosh immediate action that we need to take um, it is a high priority in when when uh, doing needs analysis social economy uh, actors often mention this and government i think has become aware of visibility um, and the importance of increasing recognition and it often appears as a strategic area or a strategic axis in strategies that we've seen in the Spanish one, for example, or um, in uh, Ireland or Poland. Um, recognition needs to be increased in all of the stakeholder arenas. So not only thinking about the general public, we're not only thinking about an advertising campaign to let everybody know what the social economy is, but in, in the circles where actually uh, support and resources can be found. So um, it is very interesting how you can target your recognition measures at the government and public sector itself. So for example, training, um, legislation, uh, involving um, uh, social economy actors in policy working groups, or you can target the more sort of uh, professional public, that means financiers, um, uh, capacity builders, um, social economy and, uh, and enterprise um, development organizations by doing events, conferences, um, or uh, creating, campaign, creating and supporting campaigns. Data and statistics is one that we tend to often forget. Um, because it's painstaking, it's um, long-term, but it is very important to increase the recognition and the visibility of the actual size and actual importance of the social economy when looking at um, strategies. So for example, in Portugal, Portugal is one of the few countries that have created a satellite account within their official statistics, but there are other countries where there's regular data gathering exercises um, to uh, identify and quantify social economy and its um, and its importance, and this is something that could actually be really interesting to link to your um, to your need about social impact measurement and and engagement, because um, depending on what data is being gathered, uh, regular statistics statistics and studies can be really important to help you. Um, uh, capture um, the social and environmental impact of, of social economy organizations as a sector, as a whole. Um, an interesting um, example also is labels. This is not so common yet, but it, it is certainly very interesting to increase overall recognition um, or to, for example, aid um, the access to public procurement tenders for social enterprises. So having a verification, a verified label um, might be really, um, um, might really ease social enterprises' um, access to public sector markets. 
legal framework is um, is one that um, should not be overlooked and is oftentimes the first step uh, in governments thinking about what to do about social economy. And it is very important um, to create um, an enabling framework, not only regulate, so not only restrict, but to actually allow um, um, the social economy to grow. And there are, there are um, very good and perhaps less uh, successful examples of this that you will find in the paper. Um, because um, regulating has to come at the right time for the right stage of the, of the development of the social concept. And finally, on the next slide, we'll see the fifth building block, which I think uh, is part of any plan and strategy nowadays, and I'm sure you're very familiar with, which would be monitoring and evaluation. Basically, it must be part of a strategy to know how we're doing um, compared to the vision and the, the goals that we set out at the beginning. Um, it's great to have indicators included um, in the monitoring and evaluation. And ideally, this should be there from the design uh, step forward um, and attached to the objectives, um, the measurable time bound and outcome oriented. So in other words, um, think about um, what, how you will measure the indicator that you attach to um, assessing the success of a so certain objective. So for instance, if you want to collect um, aggregate data about social um, economy organizations, um, I don't know, employment practices, do you actually have a mechanism to collect that data? Do you have statistics that will deliver that? Or do you have to go out and survey some? Uh, what will indicate um, employment practices? Is it going to be uh, the duration of, of employment? Is it going to be um, the wage levels? Is it going to be the number of people entering employment? So in other words, what is it that your objective necessitates for you to measure? Are you going to stop at the output or are you going to look at outcomes, i.e. what changed as a result of your action? Um, I've referred to collection mechanisms. So, um, uh, will you actually be able to get the data? Will you be willing to get and analyze the data? And what will be your feedback loops to incorporate the lessons learned? It's great to have the large data sets sitting there if they're never used for uh, decision making, if they're never actually analyzed to see what is good and what is not so good. They might just be. Um, uh, an idle exercise. Monitoring and evaluation, as you will know, only works if there are dedicated resources allocated to making it work, because it's a lot of effort and it needs people, systems, and time. I realize that I don't have a lot of time left. So in the last three slides, I'm just going to very quickly summarize something that um, we found when looking through the different strategies and different uh, approaches in countries, what are some of the success factors? Again, um, which I mentioned before, connecting the strategy closely to the poli poli other policy goals is great. So it's not um, an isolated um, strategic plan somewhere in, in the public sector to have a vision and respond to needs. It needs to be dedicated and as comprehensive as possible, even if it has certain priorities or low hanging fruit. It needs to have an operational plan attached to it. And it is really good when it not only pushes for coordination within government, but also allows for stakeholders to integrate. We have a success factor two slide, which is the next one, where uh, we list a few more things such as engagement of stakeholders in design and implementation, using legal frameworks to increase recognition at the right time in the right place, trying to obtain high level political endorsement, and which I haven't mentioned before, but I think we will be discussing is using EU funds for adequate resourcing of the design and the delivery of the strategy. Throughout the workshops, we have a few challenge questions for you. These are included at every 
um, uh, at the end of every chapter in the thematic paper as well. And I've summarized some of them on the last slide. So just uh, food for thought also for uh, on the next slide, please. Ah, bit falls. I would like to jump to the question slide, actually. Thank you. What are um, some of the questions that you can take with you to the breakout books as well? I know that creating a strategy might sound easy because it might look like it's an it's an exercise you've done a lot. But again, getting your your stakeholders on board, how do you do that? What is the best place and where for social economy? How should it be funded if it's a separate unit within the government? Um, what are some of the main challenges um, that you've encountered when working with stakeholders? What could be the solutions? And how do you use um, data and information to track progress and in integrate into decision making? I'm going to stop here. Um, and sorry if I ran over a few minutes. Hopefully, um, this has been helpful and a good um, starting point for the conversations to come. Thank you.